Okay, guys, we are back in our studio here at Counterintelligence. And today I'm going to do something just a little bit different. Uh, I was going back through some of the tutorials that we've done so far. We've done a lot of like veining and, and things of that nature. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, we shot a video, hasn't posted yet, of a wood look technique. Uh, we're actually getting ready to change that a little bit. I've got some additions that we're going to make to that. Um, but this one's going to be a brown stone. Um, Throughout my career doing epoxy, browns are usually a little bit tricky when you get into the metallics. Um, it's hard to get something that looks kind of elegant. I've got a pretty nice color combination that I really like here. Um, and it's a very simple technique. It'll be very fast, very easy for you to, to mimic and do on your own. So without further ado, we're gonna get started. So I've got four colors. This is our liquid walnuts. Now with this technique, I'm going to pour out some bigger areas, especially with this dark color. I'm not really pouring out veins or anything like that. I just want this to be definitely darker spots. We're going to go to our dark taupe, which is another liquid pigment that we have here at Counterintelligence. And I'm going to pour a little bit into each one of my walnut spots, but not too much. I just want a little bit. And then the rest of this color, I'm going to kind of evenly, not perfectly evenly, but I just kind of want a little bit of this color everywhere. I don't want too much of this color. This color here looks a little bit milky if you have too much of it um, <clears throat> in any one spot. So I kind of spread it out a little more evenly. Whereas the, the walnut, I like it to be heavier in certain locations. So this is our metallic rum. We're going to do kind of the same thing with this that we did with the, uh, with the dark taupe. Spread it around. Get it, a little bit of it everywhere. I'm going to even put a little bit into the walnut. Then our last color is going to be our sandbar. This is also a metallic color. So we've had a few engagements um, in our comment section about the different materials that we use, the resins that we use, the pigments that we use, people asking where they can get them, stuff like that. Um, so Counterintelligence is a franchise company. This is a franchise opportunity. We have multiple levels of franchise opportunities for people. So most of what we use isn't available just to the general public. Um, but you know, you are welcome to use any of the techniques or any of the styles or anything that you see here. And if you are interested in starting your own business, um, our franchise model is, is very friendly to the franchisee and uh, we have a very cool product line. It, we're not just an epoxy company. We have an entire system for not only pouring epoxy countertops, but actually building countertops, installing countertops. Um, we, we have an entire system, so it's not just epoxy. But if you'd like to check us out, go to counteri.com. It's counter, the letter I, dot com, and check it out. All right, so getting back to this piece, the areas where I poured the walnut, I'm going to kind of avoid those areas at first. Okay, so I'm just going to use my gloved hand and I am going to start spreading this epoxy around. Get it out to my edges, get everything covered. This epoxy is a little bit on the cold side. Didn't have the heat on in here in the studio today. Um, it was a little cool this morning, so it's a little bit thick, but it's not bad. We can certainly make it work. All right. So 
as you can see, I'm just kind of going around the areas of the darker walnut. There's no exact science to this. Uh, obviously, you'll hear me say in a lot of my videos, I don't like perpendicular lines, so you won't see me. You see I kind of have a flow going to this piece. You won't see me taking my hand across that direction. But outside of that, there's not really a whole lot you can do to mess up just spreading out these colors. Okay, so now that we have the majority of the colors spread out, we're going to go into our dark spots. I'm just going to dig right into the middle. And then I'm just going to shove this stuff around. And this kind of looks a little bit messy at first, but you'd be surprised when we're done just how cool this comes together and looks. It looks very simple because it is very simple. Um, I'm just essentially finger painting with this product. Once again, the trick to a lot of these techniques is the pigments that you use. Not every color combination is gonna look good together and the colors don't always work really well together. So you just have to try some different color combinations to know if they're gonna work well or not. Okay, so I don't wanna over work this. So when you look at this, you'll see some hard areas where I can still see the walnut. You'll see some hard areas where I can see all four of the different colors distinctly different from each other. And that's really kind of how you want it to be. You, if you overwork this, this is going to get kind of muddy on you, which means all your colors are just going to blend together and be kind of blah. So, um, and that's not to scare you. I mean, you, you can work it a little bit, but you just don't want to go crazy. It's dry right there. Find me some material. Got a little bit right here. I always want to get those edges coated. That way the epoxy flows nice and evenly down the face as it's moving. Okay. So real quickly, I'm going to wipe off my hand. And then I'm going to give this a very quick torch. And you will see that torching it quickly at this point is going to pop the bubbles. But that's not really the main reason why I'm torching this. I'm going to torch this right this minute uh, before I do the isopropyl because it's a little bit cold. And if it's a little bit cold when you hit the isopropyl, the effect's not quite the same. So by me going ahead and giving this thing a quick torch, it's just going to help warm it up just a little bit. I don't need it to be hot. I'm just loosening up the epoxy just a little bit with some heat. So right now this doesn't really look like much. Um, but you'll see, once we hit this with the isopropyl, the, the thing that makes this technique work really, really well is having the different types of pigment, as I was saying a few minutes ago. If you just had all liquids or all metallics, um, this wouldn't be near as a dramatic effect. Once I hit this with the isopropyl, you're going to see how all these colors twist and turn over top of themselves. And it's going to just create a really cool effect without much work from us as the artist. So now for the fun part. So what this does is all the lines that we made with our fingers, if we don't hit it with the isopropyl, it'll still look okay but you'll be able to kind of tell that it's just swirled in there. When the isopropyl actually lands, it breaks the lines of the, all the different colors. And as the isopropyl evaporates, those lines come back together, but they don't come back together perfectly like they were before. 
So it looks like little tiny fracture lines inside of the, the granite or the marble, uh, whatever you're going for. But this color combination right here works extremely well together. Um, the colors all, all, they fight each other just enough. You get some really cool effects, but uh, nothing hates each other, so you don't get any fish eyes or nothing like that. So, you know, anytime you want to try a new color combination, the best thing to do is just try it on a small sample and see how it works. So see, by not overworking this piece, yeah, I have this bigger spot of the walnut, you know, these bigger spots. If you don't like those spots, then all you got to do if you don't want those is just work the product a little bit more and you will, uh, you will get rid of those. But personally, I kind of like some heavier spots. I got a bigger spot of the taupe right here. You know, I, I like some of those heavier spots of the individual colors. That's a pretty nice looking brown marble. And you could adjust these colors however you want to. Uh, but with our color palette right now, uh, this, is, this is just a really nice combination. Uh, it's got a lot of different tones of brown and it goes with a lot of different things. So those customers that, even though 80, 90% of our customers want white marble right now, not everybody wants white marble. A lot of people are getting tired of white marble. I think the industry is getting ready to shift back towards more of a warmer tone like some browns. So this might end up being something very hot, very popular for you. So I do recommend playing around with some of the browns and uh, come up with a few different looks for people. Uh, you want to have some nice sample boards of some whites, some grays, blacks, and browns because um, you never know what you, the customer is going to want. So 